Hello and welcome to the Wheel Crime Podcast. This podcast is ran by two ladies who play games, mumble profanities, and laugh way too often. Also, this podcast does cover topics of sensitive nature, and as such, listener discretion is advised. Hello, 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 and welcome back to another episode of the Wheel of Crime podcast. My name is Jen. My name is Emily, and yes, welcome back. Another week has gone by. (laughs) Sure has. June here is on the fly. I don't know how to rhyme. (laughs) It's June. It is. Wow. Wow. It's almost freaking July, actually. Literally. I know. I'm not kidding. Time really has been flying. It's like, I don't know if this is like an age thing because I'm kind of suspicious, but I really feel like the longer I've lived, the quicker things like happen or something or the quicker time goes by. Like, I swear to God, I swear to God, it was just a couple weekends ago where like we had a bunch of snow on the ground and like, you know fighting for my life on the road every day and no if if, if we're here it's gone and it's warm out sometimes i know it's kind of sad though because i'm like oh we're already in july we're like the summer's like basically over i know for us it feels it literally just started i'm also stressed because now i'm trying to do something like every weekend because in the winter times i I don't want to do anything right so now i'm trying to like get out and like do stuff but then too i'm not used to it either so that i'm just like fucking tired all the time and i'm like oh no i'm tired and my joints hurt (laughs) and i want to go to bed early it's true what's happened to me like the summers are always so crazy. Emily and I were trying to plan a, like, kind of last-minute trip to Jasper together. And then she's like, okay, what about this weekend? And I'm like, busy. And I'm like, what about these weekends? She's like, busy. Yep. And I'm like, cool. So we have no mutually free weekends yeah, literally, I was from like, now I was, until I, September. I was like, what's your June of 2025 looking like? Can you squeeze me in <laughs> on a weekend then? Which, like, it, it's baffling <laughs> to think about sometimes. But also, for sure, has to do with, I think, also, like, our age group. Because, like, I have so many weddings this year. And like, oh my God, don't get me started. (laughs) Don't get me fucking started on all the weddings. I know, crazy. And then too, it like, it's not just weddings, right? It's always like, it's like bridal parties and engagement parties and like other things too. And like trying to do anything outside of that. Like I told my sister that I would go to her to like some rodeo stuff this year. Like that's pretty much come and gone now. And we've been to one rodeo and I was like, oh no, like what, what is going on? I know it's crazy. I, it's just, I don't know. I feel like, yeah, like every weekend of the summer gets filled up. So then you like have all these fun things and then summer just over and then you're like, cool. Now I got to be depressed for seven months. <laughs> Literally. Well, and I, it's like, I want to go rafting like down the river, but then everybody's also busy on all of the weekends. And then I'm busy on all of the weekends. And it's like, when, 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 when do you have st- time to do anything? It just doesn't happen. I miss having like all of July and August off, like when we were kids, you know, like the oh, for summer sure. break or whatever with well, yeah, no responsibilities. Well, yeah, because you can actually have time to do stuff. Yeah, right? It'd be nice if like yeah. in the summertime, we Canadians who are already suffering would have just like a three-day weekend where like you have to have like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday off and nobody works and you can just hang out outside. That would be cool to me. I like that. That'd be incredible. Right? All right. Well, what have you done this last week, Jen, since we've uh, come back to the show? Um, Emily's bullying and some other people's bullying finally worked and I bought new shoes. Uh, <laughs> I had some ancient Birkenstocks. Oh, that my God. Guys. Should have been retired like a year ago. Like, it's disgusting. It's so vile. Like, Jen <laughs> would be walking around in these things and they literally look like they're trying to fly off their feet. They, they're they like melted pancakes that she's strapped onto her feet. <laughs> like, at this point, at this point, I wouldn't even call it bullying. Like, I'm looking out for the welfare of your shoes because they looked like they were suffering. I was like, Jen, you cannot keep they putting were. your Birkenstocks through this. Like, they, they're ready to retire and you're like... I don't know. I think I'll make them last through the summer. And I was like, you don't understand. Like, they're in pain. Like, you need to put them down. (laughs) Like, 
<laughs> you want to hear the most embarrassing part? And I like, I don't know if I really want to share this publicly, but here we go anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> when I went to go buy them, because I was like, whatever, I'll just go to the, like, I was already at the mall to go see a movie. So I was like, fuck it. I'll just like go pick them up instead of ordering them online. I'll like, I'll be a, a big person, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's all about self-improvement, you know? Yeah. Uh, I walked in there and I was like, cool, those ones. Like, didn't even try them on because I was like, I want the exact ones that are on my feet right now. Yeah. And I know my size. Uh-huh. And the lady looks at me and she's like, do you want to wear them out? <laughs> <laughs> But Jen, that's how you wearing... know. That's how you know it's bad. <laughs> Could you imagine if you went in there and didn't leave with a new pair of shoes? They would be talking about you for weeks. They'd be like, "Yeah, you remember that girl who came in with just the straps of her Birkenstocks on her feet and didn't fucking buy a new pair?" <gasps> oh my god, like, that's crazy! I was, like, I was like, "No, I'm good. Like, I'll make it back to my car without." <laughs> new shoes on no i listen you're better than me i would have been so much i'd be like do you want them like can i throw them out here like i like i don't know that's that's crazy i totally get it though like as a salesperson you'd be like so what's the plan you good no you, well you know what you should have said oh these are a gift <laughs> i love them I love them. They're like my favorite pair. I, I'm I'm getting a new pair for one of my friends' birthdays. They'd be like, oh. "Yeah, hers are really broken down and disgusting. You should see them." And then she'd be like, "Oh Jesus!" Oh. Yeah, you'd be like, "You think mine are bad? Hers are worse." They'd be like, "Oh no, <laughs> they travel in pairs. Get them out of here." They're just dust on her feet at this point <laughs> not even it would just be like you know when flip-flops like those cheap foam flip-flops start to get worn out and they're just like fuzzy thin foam at the bottom it would be that <laughs> it would be that it wouldn't even be that the rubber would be gone you'd just be walking around on the cork or whatever it is that they put on the top of the birkenstock yeah but i will say you got your money's worth out of your old pair i sure did and you know what the pair I had before that looked exactly like my old pair did when I bought them. At this point, you should just frame them. Like, put them in a shadow box with, like, the years that you've worn them in. Because, <laughs> like, it's unreal the level that you, like, of whatever it is that you put your Burks through. Like, it's it's surreal to me. Okay, uh, here's the problem. Okay, we're talking about this way too much. We've been going on. But, like... I'm, I don't care. I'm, gonna I, keep I'm fascinated um, by your Birkenstocks. I could talk about this forever. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. I think the reason they get so worn, I was I was contemplating this yesterday while I was walking out of the store. I was like, I, it's because I wear them in the rain, so then they get wet. Oh, sure. And then the I reason. also drive with them, and, like, I, the way I, like, put my heel down on, like, the pet, like, where the gas pedal and stuff is, I'm like, that's the part where they're, like, really worn, so it must be, like maybe the bending i say as your longtime friend <laughs> that the reason <laughs> your birkenstocks are worn out is because you wear them year round and i don't think they make all season birkenstocks like tires so i think i think that's why that would be my guess that's probably at least part of the reason i think i'm on to something with the driving angle that my foot goes at mm. you know I'm like yes. there's something there mm, they have a good that could be it uh yeah no my birkenstocks are fine days. i've never actually worn through a pair of birkenstocks ever in my life so <laughs> that's something it's i true. guess em emily's first pair she didn't wear them for like what a year and they got like hard they did it was like because i didn't want to wear them for the winter time because i didn't want to wreck them and then the summer came, and I think at the time I was just into wearing, like, flats or something, so I just didn't wear them as often as I wanted to. And then, yeah, I went to go wear them, like, after a year and a half of owning them, and they were hard as rock. I couldn't put them on because any time my foot slipped and it kind of came up the, the like, cliff that they have at the back of the shoe, <laughs> like, it literally felt like I was trying to cut my heel in half. Like, it was so painful. I was like, I gotta throw these out. Like, this is unreal. I cannot keep living like this. The cliff. <laughs> Oh my the God. cliff at the back of the shoe. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, and so that was Jen's week, which I'm very proud of her. I'm very, very proud. I feel like uh, this is new new shoe, new Jen. 
uh, for me, really? I just uh, have decided to embrace being alternative. Embrace being alternative, which is what I was telling Jen uh, before we got on the on the pod today. Just uh, you know, get the tattoo, get the piercings, call it a day. I even bought another leather jacket. You know, just uh, oh, I know it's green. I'm excited for it to come in. That is very exciting. Yeah, because I can't be normal and just have, like, a regular leather jacket. It has to be a green leather jacket because I don't see people Obviously. wearing green leather jackets. So, yeah. Emma. like a, Is it, like, a dark green or, like, a light green? It's kind of – it's an interesting color, actually. It's more of, like, a jade green. So it's darker, but it still has, Ooh. like, the vibrancy of the green, you know? That sounds really pretty, actually. I know. I'm excited for it to come in so I can actually see it in person because sometimes stuff looks different compared to, like, when you order online and whatever. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And that's uh, that's how my last oh, week was going. Send me a peg. Oh, my God. I tell you what, when it comes in. Uh, and, yeah, that's all I got. Just uh, losing my marbles, one marble at a time, and working and trying to enjoy the summer. And that's all I got. That's my life. Fair. Well, shall we get into our wheel of questions then? Yes. All right. Let's spin the wheel of questions. Were your parents worried about you getting kidnapped as a child? Oh, my God. You already know the answer to this question. Yes. <laughs> literally. I don't think they ever weren't. Like, I think they woke up thinking I was going to get kidnapped one- that day. And then they went to bed thinking that I was going to get kidnapped somehow from my locked window that they put a lock on at night. Like, I think it never, ever left their brain that I was going to get kidnapped as a child. It's true. Me and Emily used to live two doors down from each other. And her mom, I think her parents were genuinely concerned there was a bush in between our houses. And yeah, our I neighbors. Think that they thought someone was going to snatch her from the bush. But they did. Like, I thought, to be fair, as a kid at first, I was like, sure, like, that would happen. Like, even then, I was like, yeah, my, like, because literally when Jen says two doors down, she means it. Like, my house, a neighbor, and then Jen's house. Like, there was one family between the two of ours <laughs> in a suburban neighborhood. And they fully, genuinely believed that some weirdo was going to fly out of this bush in the neighbor's front yard and just snatch me and take me away. And I still have no idea why they think this way. I asked them about it, actually. I think a couple years ago, just because we were, like, talking about, like, Mm -hmm. childhood stuff. And I was like, did something happen where, like, somebody almost got snatched? And they were like, oh, no, not any of you kids. But there was a girl in your elementary school who was almost snatched out of these, like, trees by the playground by a guy on a bicycle. And I was like, so not even our family? Like, nobody even tried to kidnap anybody from our family and you guys were at this level? That's crazy. But yeah, so they did think quite a lot about me getting kidnapped. Like, every day, I think, for years and years. I See, I... Because I, I feel like there's a very big difference between you and I, where you're the, the oldest and I'm the youngest. Yes. So I feel like there's... Parents generally get chiller the more kids. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so I feel like my parents, like, I'm sure were at points concerned because I liked to disobey them sometimes, but like, I feel like they were of the mindset, well, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen, like, oh, that's the, not our problem. To be fair, though, you were there wasn't really any telling you <laughs> as a kid, I think your parents were just content. To, like, let you exist in there. Like, she has her own way of doing things, and that's okay, as long as it's nothing too (laughs) crazy. Like, I think that's just kind of... Pretty much. Well, because it's funny, because I have memories, like, of being kids, and, like, your parents trying to tell you to do things, or to suggest things to you, and you just fucking were like, nah, I don't think so. And they were like, (laughs) okay, fair enough. (laughs) (laughs) It's true. Like, my dad definitely put his foot down. We were all, like, on a family vacation in las vegas and i think it was like four i was 14 Mm -hmm. and we i wanted to walk around this like outdoor mall by myself and he's like no like i just feel like this is not a good idea and i'm like literally why literally why give me a good reason yeah (laughs) so like they let me they let me do it quote unquote while my mom was not so covertly following me around and then it made me so mad that i was trying to lose her (laughs) 
That's so on brand for you, though. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) Memories. All right, should we spin for our next wheel of questions? Yes, spin away. Number one. Ooh, if you were to get another cat, what would you name it? Oh, uh, I would go, here's the thing with cats. I go off of their colors and general vibes when it comes to naming. Mm -hmm. But I did notice that kind of got like a nature thing going on with like my cat's names. Because, well, Fig was named Figaro originally after the cat in um, Pinocchio. Because I thought that was just a cute name. But then we shortened it to Fig and Fig is like a fruit, I think. It's a, it's a plant of some kind. I don't know right now. Uh, and then It's edible. Yeah, people eat them. And then Clover came along, and I kind of at that point, I was like, oh, well, like a nature-inspired name would be good for her. So then I just went with Clover, because, like, I liked the name Clove, but not as a full name. So then I figured, like, to shorten to Clove would be fun. I've never called her Clove once in her life. Like, just when I'm mad at her, I call her Clover. <laughs> and then she's got, like... 15 other names we've given her so never even mm-hmm. ended up working out the way i thought anyways but if i was to get another cat i don't know because we have two ferals that come by that i feed uh at nighttime because for anybody who might be new to the podcast i live in the countryside in a countryside community and people love to just deposit animals here sometimes and then they need to be fed especially in the winter time so we have two cats that come mm-hmm. by and the one is a gray cat that I've decided to name Oak. And the other one is an orange and white cat that's like a big boy. He's a big cat. And I've named him Maple because I thought it was cute. Aww, so, that know. is cute. Right? So I think I'd go with maybe another nature name. I feel like I've, I've got a trend going on in my house now. Yeah. Have you considered getting another cat? This is just kind of like a... I would love to. Uh, We do not have the space for another cat right now because cats are, like, somewhat territorial even if they, like, like each other. Like, there's places in my house that, you know, only Clover gets to hang out in and there's places in the house where only Fig gets to hang out and they've got, like, a split shift where one of them is allowed to be in the bedroom in the afternoon and the evening and the other one's only allowed to be in the bedroom at night and in the morning. Like, they've got, like, a thing, right? So I feel like if we were to get a Mm -hmm. third cat... Also, they're toilet trained, and I feel like trying to get three cats to share one toilet is already not going to be, like, a good situation. So. (laughs) Jesus. I would love to. I would need a bigger house, though. And the place we live in currently only, because it's a condo board rule, it's only, like, two pets per household or something weird. So, we're capped out. I did uh, try to circumvent that rule by getting sea monkeys last year, Mm -hmm. and I never got in trouble for my sea monkeys. So... And I had, like, 50 of them. Would you, if you moved, would you take the feral cats with you? I would at would least try to, because here's the thing. Oak, super feral. Like, he just likes to come by to eat, hang out with, like, my cats, because my cats stay in the catio, right? So he'll hang out on the outside of the catio with them for a bit and then, like, do his own thing. Not a big people person. Hates them, actually. Hates people. Which, fair. He's allowed to. Uh, whereas Maple is very timid but really, really wants to be allowed inside of my house. Like, Maple will sit outside of the catio and kind of, like, wait for the invitation to come from my cats to go inside. Like, Maple wants a family, Mm -hmm. but he's also scared of people, so you can tell he's not, like... I think he was dumped, is the thing. Like, I think that Oak might have already... Might be a barn cat or something that just happens to also be in the area. Whereas I think Maple used to have a family when he was a kitten and got dumped here. So I think we, it's so sad, especially with the way he acts. Like you can tell he's like a cuddle bug and he's got like these like really small eyes and a big round head from how big he is. Like he is just the cutest thing ever. So I think I would try to bring Maple just because I know his temperament at this point from feeding them for so long. But I don't think Oak would be happy to go anywhere. I think he, I think he's happy with his nature life. That's fair. Love that for Oak. Yeah. Well, what about you? Would you get another dog at this point or another pet or another bird? Maybe another bird. Maybe. Like another budgie. Just Mm -hmm. because I think it would be nice for Appa to have, like, 
a friend because mm-hmm. they are very social. Um, never say never, but at this point, I would not want another dog. <laughs> at least not another puppy, maybe. I think you might change your mind when he, when your puppy gets a little bit older because puppy crazy is, like, pretty crazy. Maybe. But, like, right now, I'm like, he's a handful. And I am tired constantly. Fair. Yeah. No, I remember when like, my parents' dog was a puppy. And it, it takes up a lot of energy and time. Oh, I think if I got another dog, like, I would want an older dog. Mm-hmm. Which makes sense, I, yeah. Like, I would adopt an older dog versus, like, adopting a puppy. Oh, my God. It's so much work. Don't worry. Kittens are also a lot of work, but it's funny. I look back on when my cats were kittens because we both received them as kittens. And it is sweet for a lot of things. Like, I remember when Fig was really, really small, he used to, like, curl up on top of my head to go to bed, like, on my pillow because he was small enough to fit up there. Uh, Mm -hmm. But he was a cute kitten. You know, he was fairly well-behaved. Clover, we, like, I've talked about this on the podcast before, so some of our older listeners might remember this. Genuinely insane. Climbing up the walls with her little fingernails, like, like a menace. Peeing in my bed every single night because she was too scared to go to the bathroom by herself in the middle of the night. It was awful. It was so, so Ugh. bad. But we've we've gotten that better. That sounds awful. The only thing I still have to deal with is occasionally she will poop on the floor still. But besides that, everything's good in my house. We're happy. You know, it's Well, no fun. one's perfect. <laughs> it's almost perfect. We're, we're It's so good. Oh, my God. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. Like, I love my puppy. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. But I don't know if I want to do this again. (laughs) Well, they say you should never own more pets than you have hands. So, technically, if I was to get another cat, I don't have three hands. So, Andrew would have to pick pick up the slack a little bit on pet care around the house, I think. Who? Okay, this is, like, so off topic. We are just like in a, a yappy we, mood today. We've I derailed. Think. It's fine. I'm here for it. <laughs> Who does the majority of pet care in your household? Like, would you say that you are like their primary caretaker? Because I am definitely Dewey's primary caretaker. Whereas I feel like John does more things for our, our bird mm. than I do. That's fair. I so I work from home too is a big part of it. I think that I I would say that I'm the primary caretaker. But not for lack of effort. Like, Andrew, he really... So, he, his relationships with the cats is very different. And he would he would call himself a part-time ter- caretaker. He wouldn't say that there's a primary caretaker. But the cats seem to feel like their needs are met more with me than they do with him, per se. Fair. So, there's a little bit of favoritism with that, where if they need something, they'll come find me. Or, like, I know... I can understand what they want a little bit better. Like, he just won't understand sometimes, like, if they want catnip, like, how they are asking for catnip or how they want to play with certain types of games and, like, these kinds of things where I do. So I would say I'm the primary caregiver, but like I said, that's up for debate in my house, though. Yeah, I I feel very similarly. Like, I think (laughs) John, like, he takes care of them... Like, he takes care of Dewey, like, a bit, but I definitely, I feel like, meet his needs more. And I think you can kind of tell, too, when when the animal in question is constantly wanting to spend time with one particular person. I feel like that's kind of a yeah. good sign, usually. But I was surprised, though, at first anyways, because uh, that's kind of been the trend in our house since we got our first cat, Fig. And I always thought for sure, because up until that point, I just always had family members be like, oh, yeah, cats really love, like, men. Because men are not super, like, active or, you know, doing stuff around the house. They want to be able to sit there and relax. So cats typically like men better. But that's not really been my experience. Like, if I'm doing something, my cats want to be in with me on it. If I'm, like, making something, they're in on it with me. If I'm cooking, they are up there with me picking out vegetables. Like, they love doing stuff. 
I feel like every animal is so different. Like some really are more like lazy and just like want to chill. And then some want to do more things. I don't know. I think it really depends. Right. I really feel like if they, if they were, if my cats don't like sharing with each other, that's not a thing. They like each other well enough, but it's kind of like a sibling rivalry sometimes. If they could both each Mm -hmm. have a shoulder of mine to sit on without fighting each other, I honestly think they would. Right. (laughs) Right? Aww. (sighs) It's cute. But let's spin for our... What what is this next? Question three or question four? Three. Okay. Let's spin for our third question. Number four. Were you trusting of strangers as a kid? Nah. (laughs) (laughs) I... Probably because my parents were a little crazy for a little bit. Sorry, love you guys if somehow this gets back to them. But you were uh, very much insistent on being like, you cannot trust anyone. Even people who weren't fully strangers. Like, I didn't, I didn't, I, serious trust issues. Did not trust a single person, I think, until like, teenager years or something. Just, uh, yeah. I thought they were all suspicious and I didn't like any of them. I mean, maybe for good reason. Considering. Probably. Well, there's no way a stranger should be talking to a kid anyways, you know? Like, my parents were probably on the right path with that line of thinking. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. What about you? I mean, I feel like... It's weird. Like, I feel like I was maybe a little bit more extroverted as a child Mm. and grew into being an introverted person later in life. (laughs) However that works out. But I wasn't... Like, I feel like my parents instilled well enough into me that, like, "Mm, you don't go with random people. Yeah. See, I feel like that's, like, I feel like that's just a good parenting skill. Don't let your kids welcome strangers. I feel like that's just adding an extra level to <laughs> pa, to care needs and stuff like that, but. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to do that. Yeah. That's just, just leave them. Keep the strange, keyword of stranger, strange, strange people out and away from your house and your family. That's what I say. Exactly. All right, well, let's spin for our final question. Yes, ma'am. All right, what is the last question? What is your preferred summer sport? Summer sport? I personally like swimming. Hmm. I'm not a big sports person. Baseball, swimming, tennis, uh, pickleball. Uh, I like swimming also. Uh, and if I had to pick like a land sport, Mm. I'd pick tennis if I was picking a land sport. Yeah. Maybe like badminton or something. I don't know. I'm not really a big sports person. My, my partner loves golfing, loves golfing. I just... There's lots of things I don't find an appeal in. Like, why do I just want to hit balls around, you know? Like, why why would I do that? I could be at home reading (laughs) or watching Bridgerton or doing something else, you know? Like, why why would I I leave my house to go hit a ball? Or scroll on TikTok. (laughs) Yeah. But again, why would I leave my house to go hit a ball? And maybe it's a ball of a different color or of a different size and there's different rules or whatever. It is still at the end of the day hitting a ball. And for what? Facts. Right. For what? And for Literally what? for what? Yeah. Well, that's all I have <laughs> for answers for that. Amazing. I'm not a sports well, person, so. <laughs> Do you have any guesses as to what my story is about today? I think your story is somebody goes and beats somebody else up with a baseball bat because they <laughs> were mean to their cats. And... I'm trying to think of what other questions you asked me. That's all I got. I can't remember. (laughs) I wish. Um, Unfortunately, no. Zero out of ten for you. Zero? No! I thought it was close (laughs) at least. All right. So today we're going to talk about Morgan Chantel Nick. And she was born the eldest of three children on September 12th, 1988 in Ozark, Arkansas. 
Her parents, Colleen and John, kept a happy family in her youngest years, but sadly, the love soon faded and the couple parted ways after six years of marriage. At the time, Morgan was still just a young girl, and after the divorce, she became timid and mostly kept to herself. Often, she would only engage with others after she had gotten to know them. But she was a dedicated Girl Scout. She had a passion for creative activities like arts and crafts. And in her free time, she enjoyed snuggling up with her recently adopted kitten, with whom she slept with every night. Cute. Love it. (laughs) When she dreamt of the future, Morgan imagined herself as a combo circus performer and doctor, which, honestly dream career like that's pretty a pretty elite combo a hundred percent yeah so as morgan grew up she developed a very close bond with her mother and they spent a lot of time together morgan and her mom were invited by a family friend to attend a little league baseball game at woford field in alma arkansas on june 9th 1995 the location was approximately 30 minutes from their house and wanting to spend more time With her daughter, Colleen accepted the invite. The baseball game was a late one starting around 9 p.m. And Morgan's six at this time. So I feel like for a six-year-old, that's a very late activity. Mm -hmm. But to each their own. Yeah, I feel like at six, usually they're like sleeping by eight. I mean, the ones I know anyways. Yeah. But this was in the 90s, so I guess things were different. Probably. (laughs) For the majority of it, Morgan sat on the bleachers with her mom, but around 10.30 p.m., Morgan was approached by two friends, a girl and a boy who were a few years older, who asked if she wanted to catch fireflies in the nearby baseball field. At first, Colleen was hesitant about letting her daughter go, And as they were unfamiliar with the area, but after being told by other parents that it was a safe area, she eventually agreed. The kids went to play nearby, close enough that Colleen was able to check on Morgan. Colleen later said that she had checked on the kids three or four times that night. Finally, against my better judgment, I told her she could go and play, and she threw her arms around my neck and gave me a big hug, Colleen remembered. We could see them very clearly, and the last time that I turned to look, Morgan was running back and forth playing. Morgan was last seen at 10.45 p.m. by her friends, emptying sand out of her shoes alone near her mother's car, which was a Nissan Stanza. While the other two kids emptied their shoes a few dozen feet away, Morgan's friends reported seeing a quote-unquote creepy man talking to her as she was putting her shoes back on. Which is never a good sign. Literally, I started to have, like, an uh uh-oh gut feeling as soon as you were talking about how, like, what the mom remembers. And it's like, oh, now there's a creepy man. Okay, here we go. (laughs) When the game ended, shortly thereafter, Morgan's friends returned to the stands without her. They told Colleen that Morgan was at their car, but when Colleen returned to the car, Morgan wasn't there. She has not been seen or heard from since. Since? This is still an open, unsolved case. Okay, that's crazy. Like, that's fast. That is so fast for somebody to go missing. Like, last seen, like, like literally all of this happens within 15 minutes. Like, she's in the stands with her mom at, like, 1030, and by 1045, no one has seen her again. See, that makes me think that there's somebody watching and waiting to see if there's any kids going off by themselves. Like, that's so, like, madly suspicious. Oh, yeah. We'll get there. (laughs) Amazing. So, at the time of the disappearance, Morgan was approximately four feet tall, about 55 pounds, with strawberry blonde hair and blue eyes. Morgan had five visible silver caps on her molars, which were scheduled to be removed in 2000. Her teeth were crowded, meaning that if she were still alive, she would have needed braces when she was a teenager. It's also noted that she had a protruding purple vein on the lower left side of her rib cage. She was last seen wearing a green Girl Scout t-shirt, blue denim shorts, and white tennis shoes. 
After desperately looking around the parking lot, a coach saw Colleen's growing panic and contacted the local authorities to report Morgan missing. Deputies arrived within six minutes. While they initially thought the six-year-old had wandered off and gotten lost, they soon began to suspect something more nefarious had occurred. Colleen went to the police department that night where she called her ex-husband to inform him of the situation. The Alma Police Department immediately launched an investigation into Morgan's disappearance, reaching out to the FBI and Arkansas State Police, as well as the media. They turned the town's courtroom into a call center to collect tips, and the FBI set up a mobile command center in the building's parking lot. Morgan's family temporarily moved into the fire station across the street, which later became the headquarters for a volunteer search. Witnesses came forward to say they'd seen an unidentified white man watching Morgan play in the field earlier that evening and alleged he'd approached her and the two other children. When spoken to by the investigators, Morgan's friends verified the sightings, and that's when it came out that they had seen her with said creepy man. Mm Mm-hmm. So between, or based on witness accounts, investigators were able to determine the man was between 23 to 38 years old with medium to solid build, standing around six feet tall and weighing 180 pounds. He had black or salt and pepper hair that was combed back and possibly curly, as well as a mustache, a beard with approximately three to four days growth, and a hairy chest. Fuck him. Stupid hairy chest man. Stupid hairy chest man yanking kids. You there? There is no reason a maybe twenty to thirty year old needs to be talking to kids. Number one, number two, the fact he was seen by multiple people being a creepy asshole and nobody said anything to fuck this guy. Yeah. Uh, so he allegedly spoke with a hillbilly type accent, and he was only wearing a pair of cut off blue jean shorts. Of particular interest was his vehicle, a red pickup truck, likely a Chevy, a Chevy Silverado or S10, with a white camper shell. It had a dull paint job, a short wheelbase, and possibly an Arkansas license plate. The camper appeared to be around four to five inches shorter than the truck bed, and it had damage to its right rear end and had curtains covering the windows. So, after reviewing some home videos taken at the game, investigators were able to obtain stills of the vehicle, but it's the 90s. So, yeah. the footage is horribly grainy yeah. and way too poor quality to get a clear image of the driver. Mm-hmm. The pickup truck is said to have left the baseball field's parking lot around the same time Morgan went missing. So, very suspicious. Ooh, Yeah. <laughs> yep. In the days following her disappearance, the authorities received numerous reports of suspicious activity involving the driver and children in the Alma neighborhood. It's believed the individual may also be responsible for two other attempted child abductions in the area on June 9th and 10th in 1995. On June 9th, a suspect resembling the man tried to entice a four year old girl into a red pickup truck but was interrupted after she began screaming, prompting her mother to come to her aid. The second attempted abduction occurred in Fort Smith, just 15 miles from Alma. An unidentified man tried to lead a nine-year-old girl into the men's restroom at a convenience store, only for her to resist. According to her, he too resembled the man believed to be involved in Morgan's disappearance. At Wolford Field, investigators gathered empty bottles, cigarette butts, and other items that may have been used by Morgan's abductor. DNA was taken from what was collected, but it's currently unknown if any matches are connected to the case. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, in cases like this, they do also have to look at the parents just to rule them out, if nothing else. Yeah. Um... And I will just preface with both her mom and her dad were ruled out as suspects. However, the ruling out process for her dad was a little bit more lengthy considering his past. What the fuck does that mean? (laughs) So an investigative report published by Today in Fort Smith in 2006 revealed Morgan's dad, John, had past encounters with law enforcement, included charges related to drugs and battery. 
According to the report, John was charged in del- in July 1987 with battery in the third degree and criminal mischief in the second degree. Nearly 20 years later, in January 2006, John was charged with two charges of possession of controlled counterfeit substance, a Class C felony, possession of drug and firearms, endangering the welfare of a minor in the second degree, and possession, use, delivery, and our advertising of drug paraphernalia. As part of a plea deal, the charge for endangering the welfare of a child was dropped. So we don't really know what that was all about. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Still not hearing anything, though, that would be, like, potential child napping related, though. Well, we're gonna get there. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) The author of the report, Shirley Boulder, learned through court records that John's involvement in drugs led him to associate with a man named Clifford Joe Pollan. During an undercover investigation, John told confidential informant that Clifford was a drug dealer and a subsequent search of police records showed he had been previously arrested for drug trafficking. Of greater interest, however, was a charge from July 1995 of the violation of a minor in the first degree just one month after Morgan went missing. The conviction spurred parole revocations for earlier crimes for which she had served no time other than a six-month sentence for harassment. An individual by the name of Rick also posted online that Clifford had a history of trading illicit drugs for sex with underage females. Oop. That's no good. Okay. No, that is no good. Uh. So that, paired with his likely access to the Morgan's house, led Shirley to theorize that he may have had some involvement in her disappearance. However, it should be noted that this is a theory presented by a member of the press and not by law enforcement. Mm -hmm. So in late June 1995, investigators received a tip from a man named Albert Harvey in Stugart, Arkansas. Albert called the Alma Police Department to report he'd been working in his yard when he caught a man trying to break into his pickup truck. What struck him as odd was that he had a young girl with him who he believed resembled Morgan. The tip resulted in an extensive search of the area, which included helicopters and search dogs. Albert was also given two polygraph tests, which he failed. This prompted him to admit he'd made up the story, saying someone had tried to steal his truck, but the individual didn't have a child with him. For this deception, he was arrested. And I literally don't understand why people do this. It's, okay? Like, this is... the only, It's insane to me. The only reason that I can think of, because, like, I'm with you on this one, for the amount of stories that you've told and the amount of people who make shit up about this kind of stuff, it has to be an attention thing. Because it's, it's crazy. Like... For what? Like, why are you putting yourself in the middle of this situation? Yeah, like, and, like, for, literally for what? Like you said, like, it just, I don't know, it baffles me, too. Ugh. So, on January 15th, 2002, state police and the FBI conducted a search of a private property in Boonville, Arkansas, after receiving a very specific tip that claimed Morgan may have been buried there. A cadaver dog was brought in to assist, but nothing related to the case was uncovered. Following the search, investigators shared they didn't intend to return to the property. Federal investigators searched another property, a mobile home in in Spiro, Oklahoma, on November 15, 2010. They were hoping to locate DNA evidence to show Morgan was once held in the location, but little was released regarding the results of the search. The same location was searched just over seven years later in December 2017 by the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, also known as OSBI, and the FBI and local investigators. The renewed search was prompted by a tip that came in through the case task force, though it was not directly related to Morgan's disappearance. Cadaver dogs were brought in and hit on a well in the property, but the search was called off after one day as no evidence was uncovered. According to the police, the owner of the property had been a person of interest in the case since the beginning of the investigation. He is currently incarcerated on an unrelated child molestation and rape charges. 
In August 2012, Tanya Smith and James Monhart, convicted films, were arrested after Tanya was caught trying to purchase personal documents belonging to Morgan, including her birth certificate. It's also alleged she used her social security number. Despite their actions, the pair aren't thought to be connected to the case. At one point, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children launched a statewide campaign aimed at generating more tips about the case. This involved construction of billboards along I-40 in the Alma and Fort Smith areas, as well as in Little Rock and Northwest Arkansas. Each featured an age progression image of Morgan, as well as a number of people who could call with any information they might have. In 2019, OSBI included Morgan's picture on a set of cool case playing cards, which were distributed to local prisons. Hers was among a host of other unsolved disappearances and murders from the general area to be featured in the deck. So they were kind of at a standstill at this point of like, there was really no new information coming in. Well, it sounds like too that they Until, thought like a good to idea at least. It's just not enough evidence. In, many of which were credible and involved. It feels like they have like a lot of like unknown information. So it seemed like, like the maybe you could go this way, but nothing series on HBO yeah, really, really did help bring some new. To chase. Like as, at this case, point too, like unsolved. to me anyways. And this usually. Month, of June and I know this isn't the case, but if there is somebody who is has not been associated to the a Morgan child case directly, is still an that has like a weird fascination, the with case like is a them or classified anything. as a non-family abduction. I don't abduction. know if that to me says alive, that they already Morgan know that kid, though, years you know, because some people with just like randomly target and obsess about people too. Asked to contact the Alma Police Department at 479-632-3333 or the Arkansas State Police at 501 783 on tips HBO, can also be called into the FBI at 479-452-5873 or the Morgan Nick Foundation at 1-877-543-4673. Really? Okay. Yes. So the latest break in the case came in November 2021, and the FBI announced a man named Billy Jack Lynx was a person of interest, the first person to be publicly I mean, named as such. According to investigators, he had been on like, their radar for approximately like there, there three years. There is a years. chance, right? There is However, a chance that, like, Billy passed away in 2000 while serving a six-year prison sentence for sexual for indecency with a child. The conviction was a result of an attempted child abduction, which occurred just two months after Morgan went missing and only eight miles from the baseball field. Okay. So, on the evening of August 29th, 1995, an 11-year-old girl was at a local Sonic restaurant with her brothers and a friend when Billy pulled up in a pickup truck and began talking to her. She alleged the conversation turned into sexual matters before he offered her money to come back with him to his house. Frightened, the girl ran away. Billy fled the scene but struck a pole as he drove away. A witness who'd noted his truck's license plate helped the authorities link him to the attempted abduction. Tests done inside the truck indicated blood on part of the seat and hair in various areas. Lab techs found the blood and blonde hair but did not have enough DNA information for a conclusive match. Law enforcement also found a blue-green cotton fiber in the mat under the seats in the metal pieces of the truck. FBI techs were able to match the fiber on a microscopic level to a Girl Scout shirt of the same type that Morgan wore when she disappeared. Uh Uh-huh. That's a little too on the nose. Yes. So court records from the Van Buren incident reveal that a neighbor who lived next to Billy in 1995 told investigators back then that he thought there was a camper shell on Billy's truck a few months ago. Oh? So it seemed like the truck from the field might have been his and he just took the camper shell off. Yeah, so then anybody who would have been looking for a camper shell truck wouldn't see one after that 
Huh. All right. So ever since Billy became on the FBI's radar, they obviously have been trying to find out more information about him, Mm -hmm. which can be difficult now that he's dead. Presently, they know that he was born in Crawford County, Arkansas, and served in the United States Army during the Second World War. Between 1962 and 1974, he worked for Braniff Airlines in Dallas, Texas, before moving back to Van Buren, Arkansas, in the late 70s. Prior to his death, he may have had ties to adjacent states. Court's records indicate Billy had previously been convicted of sexually abusing a young girl, pleading no contest to sexual abuse in 1993. He was given a suspended sentence and ordered to undergo counseling. As of 2021, law enforcement continue to receive new leads in the case, which are investigated at the local, state, and federal level. Thousands of tips have been followed up on and hundreds of interviews conducted since 1995, leading to a case file that fills an entire room. There have also been numerous unconfirmed sightings, but still no clues as to where Morgan is or the person who abducted her. Like, they really, I think a lot of people believe it's Billy, Mm -hmm. but they can't really confirm it at this point. Well, and I would be... Because there's no, there's not enough DNA evidence. I would be thinking, even with the stuff they have found, like, sure, lack of DNA evidence, but they were able to find that other stuff. I would not be totally surprised, though, she was dead is the thing, though. Like, if, if they haven't had any information on her coming forward or sightings... Or, you know, this kind of thing, and he's been dead since the year 2000. I don't know, man. Like, that does not, like, that does not give me good vibes. Good hopeful vibes. That does not Eh. give me good hopeful vibes. No. There is currently a $60,000 reward being offered by the FBI and local community members for information leading to Morgan and those responsible for her disappearance. Morgan's dental records and DNA are available for comparison should her remains be located. However, her parents still firmly believe that she is alive and hope that the public continue to bring awareness to the case that will hopefully bring her home one day. I've always said that until someone can prove to me Morgan is not coming home, I will believe she will, Colleen has said. In 1996, Colleen established the Morgan Nick Foundation after it became apparent there was a need for an organization capable of providing immediate assistance to families of missing children. In Arkansas, the Amber Alert Service was renamed to the Morgan Nick Amber Alert, and Morgan's disappearance has been featured on America's Most Wanted and Unsolved Mysteries. While the Nick family appeared, this is so sad. The Nick family appeared on a 2005 episode of Extreme Home Makeover after their home was da- damaged in a water heater explosion. As if they haven't had it hard enough. Oh my god. That's, oh, I hate when stuff like this happens where somebody goes through something fucking awful and then it just doesn't end. Like, oh my god. So, as I said, in April 2021, the case was featured in Still more, still Missing. Uh, the documentary aired. Which is awesome, yeah. For her parents' sake, I really hope she ends up just being alive somewhere and maybe just, like, is going by a different name or, like, had something else mysterious happen, you know?
Mm-hmm. Taking care and took care of them or yeah, or something, right? I know it's it's one of those things where because you don't know, it's really hard to say. And also like it wouldn't be the first time either. I don't remember what case it was or if this is one that you, you you covered on the show and that's why I know it or if I just heard of it but I feel like I heard there was like a lady who or like a guy or something they had been kidnapped as a kid but had ended up being given away or or sold or something or adopted out to another family completely was going by a different name figured they were just like adopted and everything and then found out way later on that they were actually a kidnapping victim it it happens and like I mean, that's kind of the nice thing about, like, 23andMe and those types of services is, mm-hmm. like, people can find out easier than ever kind of, like, a summary of their history. Oh, for sure, right? So, for her sake, like I said, that's what I'm hoping for because nobody wants to hear, you know, that – it. and here's a – it's almost like – it's a hard situation for families, especially who have been affected by this kind of thing because of the not knowing. On one hand, you hope, you know – at least maybe if she did die a little bit earlier on, then maybe she, at least she wasn't being tortured or had something else terrible happen. And on the other end, you're hoping that they are alive and that everything went good and it went okay. And like, you know, everything's fine, but it's the not knowing is the part that really, really, really sucks. Yeah. I think that's the part that would kill me is the not knowing and trying to come to terms with the fact that you may never know. Yeah, that too, the never knowing. Because, yeah, there may may be a chance that way, way later in the future they end up finding her or finding her remains. And maybe by then, like, some family members will have passed away. Like, it's hard. It's a hard thing to have to deal with. Yeah, but um, if you know anything about the case, so, cause the, so we do... I feel like reached more Americans than anywhere else. I think demographically uh, lately, call in. for sure. Yeah, if any of you American folk, this rings a bell for you. You know the numbers now to call in and hopefully get some get some stuff, get the ball rolling, because that would be awesome. Exactly. No information is too small. Like even the most inconsequential things can sometimes lead to a break in the case. You know? Oh, a hundred percent. So yeah. you literally never know. Yeah, literally. All right. Well, with that, I think that brings us to the end of today's episode. If you like today's episode, you can reach out to us at our email, which is wheelofcrime at gmail.com. You can follow us on our social media, which is on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, all at Wheel of Crime. If you would like to donate to the show, we have a Patreon, which is Wheel of Crime at Patreon. We have a website, which is www.wheelofcrime.com if you want to check us out on there. And we also... uh, are on platforms where you can review the show if you want to give us five stars just because you think we're fun and cute and deserve it that would be really nice and then (laughs) and then lastly we do still have our google doc open on our instagram and i think other social media if you'd like to submit a story of your own say uh, you've listened to one of our shows and something you have a relatable story or something you'd like to share with us you can send that in and uh, maybe get featured on our next listener stories episode because that is really cool and fun and we love doing them and we're going to have a summer edition of listener stories coming up at the end of summer here. Yes, this which year's campfire. Which seems far away, but it's not. Campfire listener stories. End of the end of the summer, yes. Yes. Gather around, so make sure you get yours in right now. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And yeah, I think that was pretty much it for end of show notes for me. Yeah, that's it. That's all. We'll see you next week for another new episode. Okay, bye. Bye.